Entry 69 through 84 of the Ashley Book of Knots cover some additional knot tying information. Entry 69 discusses how there is no such thing as a good general utility knot. Ashley notes that a clove hitch comes very close to being a general utility hitch. At sea, the clove hitch was almost solely used as a crossing knot for securing ratlins to shrouds of a sailing ship. The clove hitch isn't very secure, but it is tied quickly. It's noted by Ashley to be the commonest of all post hitches and often tied on a bag as a binding knot. Entry 71 through 73 are used to show that the purpose for which a knot is used and the way it is tied decides its classification rather than its appearance. To demonstrate this, three knots with the same form are used, the bowline, sheet bent, and becket hitch. The bowline is a loop knot and the end of the rope is made fast to its own standing part. The sheet bend bends two rope ends together. The becket hitch secures the end of a rope to a becket, which is generally an eye or a hook. Entries 74 through 76 talk about different applications of the reef or square knot. If used as a binding knot, Ashley says that the reef knot is invaluable. The reef knot should not be used as a bend though, as it may lead to injuries and even death. The reef knot easily capsizes and spills by jerking on one end. To capsize or spill is for a knot to deform into a different structure. If tied as a bend with two ropes of different size, texture, or stiffness, it will almost always capsize and spill. Ashley notes that a knot is never nearly right, but rather it is exactly right or hopelessly wrong. Entries 77 through 79 illustrate how just one change in going over and under in a different way will result in something totally different. The reef knot is a binding knot and the sheet bend is the bend. They have different purposes, but have one point of difference. If we make one change with the sheet bend, there will be no nip and the ropes will fall apart. Ashley next notes how very few knots may be drawn up or tightened by simply pulling at the two ends. Some knots have to be tied or formed and then worked or drawn into shape. If carelessly pulled, a totally different knot may occur. To demonstrate this, the granny knot is used. When pulling one end of the granny knot, it will result in two half hitches. Entries 82 through 84 are used to demonstrate how many of the desirable qualities of a knot may be lacking, but the knot may still be significant enough to serve its particular purpose. The slippery hitch is noted by Ashley as being often used in sheets and halyards of small boats. It may be spilled instantly when needed, and if properly applied and understood, it can be a good hitch. The awning knot is noted by Ashley as being used as a stake hitch on marquees and in lining off crowds. It is instantly loosened by a jerk or blow. The balancing pole hitch is noted by Ashley as being used by a performer who will pause partway up the pole and move the rope from the top of the pole and throw it to the ground. In the next video, we will look at tools that are used for rope and knot tying.